That's Kill Dr. Kai. That's us. All right, and we are live. Welcome to House Culture Conversations, special edition tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it has been an incredible weekend, and it's not over yet. But right now, we're going to have a conversation with some pretty important people to the culture. We are joined by the doctors. What's happening, doctors? What's going on? How's it going? <laughs> What's happening, DJ? DJ Billy, DJ Lott. What's That's up, it. Staff? That's it. Hey, it is so good to see you guys. Now, you know I got my team Mendo on. What's up? What's up, my name? Mendo Rock. Mendo Rock. My name's for life. All right. You know That's it. it. Hey. Well, as folks come in, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us on this special edition of House Culture Conversations. We generally have a guest here, maybe Dewey B and I and will hang out. But tonight we have members of the amazing dance crew, the doctors, and we're going to get into that in a moment here. But first of all, uh, how are you guys doing? Let's start with you, Jamie, Dr. Kylie. How are you doing? Oh, man. Well, you know, it's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 we're doing okay, doing okay. I'm like, <laughs> Betty, Betty. Doing, doing all right, living, living a dream, you know. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Well, hey, they say Mendel men are gentlemen, so I guess that's synonymous with being a pimp. There it is, there it is. <laughs> Well, hey, over here we got two of the members, uh, Bob and Doctor Doctor Kildare. How are you guys doing? Oh man, I'm doing fantastic, Doctor Doctor Gannon over here. I'm, you're doing fantastic, man. How you doing, Kildare? Well, being a, a 12 year lung cancer survivor, my wife being a 14 year stroke survivor, go. God is good. Living testimony. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Awesome. That is well, awesome. And man. as our guests come come in, Terrell Bird, what's happening? Good to see you, DJ. Uh, DJ DCR, what's happening? Good to see you guys. And as these folks come in, I, I'm there in for a treat tonight. Listen, I don't know if you know about the doctors. So I want, Bob, I want, you got to keep it like in the two to three minutes. I got you, man. I got you, man. I got you, man. He, he is he's long, but he's tell, long, man. <laughs> tell me these right. folks a little bit about the doctors. Tell them just a little bit how you got started, where you're from, how you came to be, what time period, that kind of stuff. Back in back in like 1975, like 1976, Darian, Dr. Kildare, he came at me from uh transferred over and Asked me, hey man, we should start a dance group, and and uh, he came at me a couple of times, and we said, you know what, let's do this, and, and then we started practicing, we started dancing all over the place, and uh, we 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 formed a dance group, and we we we, we called ourselves the Doctors. We got Jamie, Doctor Kylie, because he's a fantastic artist, and he made the pluggers that are world renowned all over town. And, and uh, we, we, we ended up starting the Mendel Experience. And, and, and it culminated into the awesome bi-level parties that are so synonymous with Chicago and house music. That, that is fantastic. Wow, you kept well, that under two, uh, two or three I, minutes. He kept it. He's coming. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just amazing yeah. when you prompt him. It, oh if you give him God. a prompt, it's amazing this, what he can do. Is right? this real? This dude, this dude is boss hall. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I got your son, Lori Branch. What's happening? Good to see you with us. We have been having an amazing time. Yesterday hey, Lori. <laughs> Who is that? Lord. Hey, Lori. But Lord, yesterday Lord. was a Mendel uh, class reunion, and that was an incredible time just seeing all the Mendel men together. But today, hearing about that experience of how you guys came to be and how you formed. Now, back in that time, House wasn't really there yet when you guys got started. That's true. No, no, no. no house, uh, house as as a thing really didn't occur until the eighties when when the uh, when what everyone knew as the warehouse had opened. It opened in seventy six, in early seventy six, spring seventy six. It was called U.S. Studio, 
and it was a uh, it was an underground club. It was actually a members only club uh, for the gay community. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of guys from New York, uh, Robert Williams um, came in. He opened that club. He was trying to emulate things that were happening in, in New York at the time. And he uh, he wanted to do the same thing in Chicago because he saw similar problems in Chicago for the gay community that they had been experiencing in New York. Keep in mind, this is only several uh, years removed from Stonewall. So the um, the persecution, uh, for lack of a better word, of the gay community was still pretty fresh. And it was particularly carried out on them by law enforcement. So established gay clubs in town like the Den and, and others were targets of uh, weekly raids. I mean, the cops would raid them just because they they knew they could. They could they could find something, you know, some reason to raid the places. So this uh, the warehouse was designed to be under the radar. Uh, members only, very few people would know about it. And uh, Robert um, partnered up with a guy named Siegfried. Uh, Ziggy was uh, Ziggy, a small right. business. Yeah, he was a small business proprietor on the north side. He owned a, um, uh, I think, a music shop, a violin, violin uh, shop. Violin shop, right. So, and he was a really great guy. He was a good guy. Um, Robert brought in Frankie Knuckles from New York. Frankie was uh, another New Yorker who had uh, been spinning in some of the uh, club scenes around there. So uh, so when people talk about a New York connection to house, that's really what they're talking about. Those two guys that were instrumental in starting the actual club and house as a thing really wasn't on people's radar until the warehouse had closed. Hello? It gotten shut down finally, which was around 81, 82. So, and there's a whole lengthy backstory in Think between frozen, that. Man. Uh, you guys are good. We, we can hear you. We can hear you, Bob. Yeah, can, they think they're frozen, but we can see them. We can oh, see them. Okay, you you guys can hear me, right? Oh yeah, yeah we got you, man. Okay, well, it doesn't matter if Bob can hear me. Wow. So, <laughs> oh, what is he doing? You know, you know the thing is six. They can hear us. Okay. But there's there's a whole lengthy uh, there's a whole lengthy backstory to uh, to the entire the entire uh, house uh, music house culture. Uh, okay, can you hear us? So uh, we got yeah, you. Now, you now shut up. Uh, <laughs> no, can't, so um, I can't hear I can't hear you guys. I'm sorry, but keep going. Okay, no, that's all right. We can see you though. Um, but no, the, what the doctors did, what we were doing, really predated that. But it was um, what we did was kind of an important ingredient uh, that went into the forming of that of that later scene. So um, whenever, and I'm sure by now you guys have heard about talking about doctors' connection to house when. When he talks about that, it's it's more uh, more or less an allusion to our our Man, involvement in the team that led to that. I don't know what. <laughs> and that's all right. It's can, Bob. Can you hear us? No, he can't. I'm going to tell him to go out and come back in. Yeah, yeah. We we don't need him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So now when the doctors came in on the front end of house and you guys were dancing to what kind of music? It was basically a uh, uh, disco and funk. Really the, uh, the music at that time, talking mid seventies, disco was very much in its heyday and R and B had transitioned into a full blown dance funk phase with, with parliament and uh, confunction, uh, things like that. So we were utilizing that that kind of music for what we were doing. Now initially when we when we formed the idea at the time apart and aside from Darian wanting to have a dance group the idea was to have a group comprised of the most popular guys in the school at least as we perceived it. <laughs> so so I, I don't know how objective that was but uh, as Bob put it then, he wanted to gather all the quote unquote players in the school to, to, to comprise a group that would be very popular with, with the ladies among our uh, Catholic Lee sister schools. Because any fool knew at the time, as went the female crowd, so went the party crowd. Because it, didn't, it didn't, didn't matter whether guys thought anything of one scene or another, wherever the ladies went, they were going to follow. 
So that was the idea behind how we formed it. And this was around the fall of 76. Earlier in the year, I had helped Bob put together um, a small party at a place called the Harris YMCA on, on the South side. You, you may, I don't know if it's still there, but you may remember it's like 62nd and Woodlawn or something mm -hmm. like that. So that, uh, that got the bug, it, it, that got the bug implanted for Bob. He, he liked where, uh, where he saw this thing going. He wanted to be a part of that kind of scene, putting together and promoting events and parties. And the doctors were just a natural extension of that. And it was a, it was a tangible thing. It was something that could be branded at the time before branding was even a thing. So that was around the fall of 76. So our first event we had put together and planned for, uh, it was March of 77. And at the time, you know, we're young students. We didn't have any money and didn't have any real know-how uh, in, in terms of that. So we just had a house party. At a house party at uh, one of the members' uh, houses up on the 121st or so, um, charged 75 cents, created what would be become to be called pluggers. Uh, I don't know who coined that phrase, but it's you know just little cards, flyers. We handed them out at the sister schools. We wanted to appeal to the female crowd again because they would tell their boyfriends and word would get around from them. So we were focusing on the female demographic at our sister Catholic schools. Now at this time, Mendel as a, uh, as a party entity was, was already uh, established. The, um, the Mendel parties, which almost always follow basketball games uh, during the winter and spring season were already known. So this was, uh, this was something that was easy to tap because our identification, our association with Mendel as we were individually known played into that. So that's where Mendel's popularity uh, came into it. The party was very popular, very well received. I mean, it was just a basement party, but we had more than double the amount of people we could fit in the basement. So uh, charging 75 cents even, we had come up with enough money where we could actually rent out a genuine venue for the next one. So a few months later, we actually had another one. I think it was at um, a rectory and uh, grammar school, St. Albies or something like that on the far south side uh, of the city. The, um, we had that a few months later. Then we charged, I want to say we charged a couple of bucks, you know, $2 or something like that. Now, the idea, quality control wise, was to make this an invite only thing. So the things that we handed out to pluggers, we handed out were kind of pseudo invitations and we wanted people to bring those with them as an invitation to get into the venue so that we could have an idea of what our reach was, where, and we could maintain the quality control because at that time we wanted to have quality events. We wanted uh, quality uh, attendees, people that we're going to be there to party. They were going to be there to share the love. They were going to be there to uh, have a good time. They weren't going to be there to represent gangs or gangbangers or anything like that. So the idea was to have a decisively positive theme and a positive scene. And early on, it was comprised of mostly Catholic schools. But as our events caught on, we were able to expand our, um, uh, our knowledge, uh, expand our uh, popularity pretty much to all the uh, schools in the city and as well to uh, a good number of the colleges. So the uh, doctors had pretty much exploded during 77 into something that was known throughout the city and ultimately even beyond the city. Our, our uh, knowledge of us had uh, gone regional and even national to a certain degree. That's, that's, so incredible. That, that was that's incredible. Now we got Bob and Dr. Kill there back. Can you hear us? <laughs> We back, man. We back, man. Like the Terminator. Now, Dr. Kelly, now, Dr. Kelly brought us from kind of your origins and took us through the whole house kind of background. And now we're getting into, you guys have blown up. You're becoming very popular in the, the late 70s, right? Yeah. So now, now you're starting to get to this point where the Mendel uh, by-levels, as you call it, because they weren't by-levels always. They were started out just right. like, the gym floor, the main gym floor where they play basketball. That's right. That's, that's correct. Yeah, the body level started, uh, I can't remember the exact game, but it was a, a very well-attended game. You know, they, the basketball team was always competitive. This particular year, they were they were in the running for championship, so we were getting a lot of turnout. 
And the idea behind the, the parties, they take place right after the game because people are already there. Might as well take advantage of that and have a party. Well, as it turned out, one uh, one of these games, there were more people than they could uh, handle on one level. So uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, the idea was uh, was broached to open the lower level to accommodate the overflow. And that's when the uh, buy level was uh, was born. You know, who, whoever came up with the idea, it was on the fly, but whoever came up with the idea uh, started that. And, and we probably, I don't think anyone knew at the time that was going to become a thing. That was just something to accommodate a, a particular situation at that time, that particular I, night. I, yeah. I think it might've been the fire commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been a fire hazard. It was so it, many it people. Been. And they, they said, hey, man, we got to open up the basement. It was like having going to two parties in the same building. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to talk about the, the, the doctors now. We've got these parties, these huge crowds. And you guys, how, how do you, did you guys have a method? Like, okay, right about 9 o'clock, we're going to take the floor. Or did you make grand entrances? What was a, a night like at the party when the doctors showed up? How would that come about? Well, the key, uh, it, it's, it might be more key to talk about the promotion of our events, because that's where a lot of the dancing actually uh, came into play. When we would promote the events, um, Darian, Bob, and, and Quinn, um, our dear departed uh, fellow doctor, arguably the most popular one, uh, Dr. Spumone, they would um, go around to different events, the bi-levels, the Mendel parties included, and perform. We had uh, shirts that we had designed. We even at some point had purchased some, some jackets that uh, came to become identified with us. And we would show up at these events. We show up at other other schools with um, with our uh, our material on, like kind of similar to what we're wearing now. But as, as back a then, group, we as a group, we would always try to as, come in as, as a, group a group and make an entrance, make an entrance, perform a routine at the other affairs in order to plug our own events. Right, and that's where the popularity of the group started to uh, ripple out and started to, to fan out because we were at these other events. They go to a, a party being held at Longwood or a party being here. Bob, you could probably remember more what, uh, what events, just, just Every, various events. Go wherever we go. go ahead, kill there. Matter of fact, we had to, we had to practice every entire week because every party that we went to people was expecting us to perform. I'm saying like it was no breaks. I mean, each and every week we performed because somebody was throwing a party. So even when we went to yeah. Mendel if, and we said we wasn't going to perform, everybody would be asking, oh, are you going to perform? Are you going to perform? So that's why we had made we, it, it became repetitious that we had to practice every week. We had to come up with new moves and, and new steps. And be people, ready. The public was looking for it. Be ready. Right. Yep. That, that's the branding before branding was even such a thing. Right. And. And that is, uh, in my view, that is where the actual scene is born because other kids saw what we were doing. They saw that we were promoting who we were and what we did and then having our own events and getting great turnouts because of what we were doing. And they saw something that they wanted to try and do as well. So then there were other kids forming their own groups. And before you know it, within the course this, this didn't take more than half a year. You had maybe a dozen or more groups uh, dotted around the uh, south side of the city that were now doing their own parties. They were uh, they were emulating what we had done by going around uh, some of them and performing at other fairs. Mm -hmm. And it became an actual scene, an actual culture of various groups, not just us, but groups like the Ebony Gents, the secretaries, operators, detectives, uh, even uh, some of our buddies at Mendo formed a group called Men in High Rank. Um, Blue Smoke. Um, yeah, the, the, the Blue Slick Smoke. Chicks, the gyms. The, the detectives. The yeah. secretaries. The FBI. Mm -hmm. The CTA. Most so this wanted, man. There were so many groups that, 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 that came about because of it. And, and they all matriculated to, 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 to Mendo, to Park Palladium, Burning Spear, all these different venues, St. Albies. 
were, 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 were popular uh, amongst everyone. Go. Yeah, it was, it was, it was with all those it was a group solar system that centered around us. Yeah, yeah. So with all of these groups now that ha have formed, there had to be some animosity. With what? How did? Was there competition or how, how did that? That's the out? That's the that's the beautiful thing. Well, that's why I said we we yeah. basically started like a movement because every yeah we competed, but it was fun. Everybody, I mean, it was no fights. Matter of fact, that Mendel over. Two, three thousand people was there. How many security guards was there? One police officer. No, One. no animosity. No we animosity. all love each other. Matter of fact, Bob said uh, a guy on Facebook. It was his father. Talk, Bob. What the, did he say? The police officer's son said his dad would come home and, and marvel because it was so many good-natured kids, and none of them would cause any problems. He didn't have to do anything. He's just he just go there and the four um, teachers were chaperones, Mr. Adams, Mr. Bush, Father O'Grady. Um, they they were just chaperones, really. It was it was like a it, it was just a, a family a family thing. We we love each other today, so that's the whole thing. And and and, and I, we just want that to come back. We want to bring that that attitude and that happiness back. And you know what though, the, the touch base what Bob was saying. We did the, the newspaper article. How did that newspaper article come? Because they was looking on gang violence and stumbled up on the doctors. Wow. And, right, yeah. exactly. And they was like, oh, my gosh, these guys are all positive. Yeah, and it was, it was because it was an entire scene that was created, an entire, like Darian said, an entire movement. You know, if it, if it had been an isolated incident or if it was just us, uh, it probably wouldn't have gotten that much attention. Uh, certainly wouldn't have gotten attention of, of newspapers or anything. But because there was an entire scene that had been created out of that kind of phenomena, it really caught the attention of, uh, of grown-ups, uh, grown-ups uh, across uh, all barriers. And that was significant because it, it led to our particular group. It led to the doctors specifically uh, being very much identified as more or less the core of that scene. Mm -hmm. And because of our identification with Mendel, because we were all, most of us were students of Mendel, it brought additional attention onto Mendel. You know, there's only so much that a school can do with its own parties to, uh, to gain its popularity or to, um, to, to get noticed uh, out in the greater world. What we had done was increase the popularity of the school through our association with it and the kind of positive attention that we were getting in being the core of this particular scene, this particular movement. And even though it was rooted in um, or originated with Catholic schools, it did fan out. There were public right. school uh, students and it, it was something that was capturing the imagination of the city at large. So it was right. it was very significant at that time because nothing like that, as far as we knew, had happened mm -hmm. in the city uh up till then particularly uh, during that particular era yeah up till then and you know as unfortunate as it is you guys you know because you were in school it lasted what a couple years yeah two to three years yeah we uh we started uh first event was uh march 77 the the last one uh was was 80. in fact i think we even no no we made we have to cancel the one in 80. 78. Now we had a few things in 79. We we had we had a few, but but the last one we had tried to put some together in, in 80, and I think we had to cancel that. That was, it was kind of a reunion kind of thing. Oh yeah, with the red at uh, South Commons, we tried to have an event. Right. We canceled. We also oh man, you guys, we also tried to have a big party in middle and the blizzard of 79. We had to cancel. It. Oh my god. If we would have been able to 70, get that, that would have oh, been you awesome mean, oh, that, yeah, 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 79, yeah, we couldn't, yeah, we couldn't, couldn't do that. Oh, that was, uh, uh -huh. yeah. was and we, and Jamie drew a plugger that had us all like frozen <laughs> because we were trying to say, oh, you know, we, 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 we've melted. We finally we thawed out. It was, that was, but that, that never ma ma materialized. Hmm. Now you guys, you guys had a, a couple of, uh, routines that you guys used to do. You guys didn't just get out and dance. You know, you guys, I heard a little bit about a few of these routines that you guys do. Talk about that. The operation, the operation put us on the map. 
Man, Darian was the surgeon. The guys around me, I ended up on the operating table, and he would cut me open and uh, sew me back yeah, together. Yeah. And it was all we were dancing through the whole thing. And man, that that because our our name was the doctors. That was a perfect match. But we we did um football. We did um, baseball. We did staying alive when Saturday night was 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 popular. Uh, so many we would dance confunction. We would give names after the songs we would dance to too. Man, uh, it was it was it was it was hard work. Kildare was on the football team. Jamie ran track. When they got off, they had to come to doctor right. practice. Can you believe it? <laughs> so we worked. We worked hard. It, it was. It was. It was a lot of fun, though. And um, we, we we're very thankful that uh everything happened. Mm -hmm. So so I'll ask this question: What is the importance today? You guys received a very distinguished recognition, and and uh, artifacts have been digitized right for the archives because of your contribution to music, to dance, and to the culture of that time. Uh, tell me a little bit why that's so important. Well, go ahead, Kildare. You know, uh, that's what, that's one of the uh, things that the host had asked us and stuff. Uh, how do you all feel about, you know, us recording you? And, and before I can even, I mean, you know, before we can even get out of the building, I mean, I was walking up the aisle and one guy said, Oh my God, man! You all are legends. I back in the '80s, I started this group. I was this and that. And he was like, "This is where it started from," you know. So, so what's so awesome about is what we did back then, and here it is. What forty some years, and we still talking about the doctors. What we what we want to do is is what we did then. We, we, we it's like I, I feel like since we. Did it then? We can do it now. Simulate it now. We can do it now, and, and we we want to help turn the attitudes around and try to give young people something to do, something positive to do, like we did. And we were when we were in high school. It worked before; it can work again. Instead of picking up a gun and getting a game, grab a T-shirt and khakis and start a dance group. There you go. And not only did did the movement. I mean, that we start a movement. We actually, like Bob said and stuff, by him taking the ec economic classes and stuff, he was on top of it by the fact because of the numbers. And there's other people that, that then, uh, matter of fact, Tamara did uh, with WVON. She had a dance group. Ladies back, with class. Ladies with class. From Aquinas. Really? Yeah. And, and people just, they want to try to Google everything instead of going to school. They want to drop out of school. You didn't, you didn't even think about that, man. You, you, you wouldn't want to miss a day of school. You know, and, and get in right. trouble and go to the disciplinarian. And and, 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 and people, I mean, it's just, we, we want to try to, re, to to try to bring back that 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 happiness. It, basically uh, what it was, friend. everybody looked forward because they would practice all weekend. And, th and then when we come to the party, every group would dance against each other and stuff. But it was all fun. It was no, it was no animosity and stuff. You know, we do high fives if, if we outdid another group and, that, uh, that group would high five if the group outdid us, like the Ebony Gents. They right. was a thorn in our side, but they made us. They made us. They made up. us better exactly. too. The competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, uh, that is incredible, DJ Dewey B. I know when we were in the '80s doing our thing, this was pretty special to have this legacy to come in on. After that, your thoughts? It definitely was there, DJ D. Lot. Uh, it put us on the map, actually. Um, if you got a chance to go to a mental party, it was an experience. And that experience changed your life a lot of times. You know, you might you might have got introduced to your wife at that party. You know what I'm saying? Come on. You never know. And uh, right. one thing I want to emphasize, though, or get to because it how it relates to the house culture is who were your DJs back then? We we need to talk about that. You know why? Yeah, some, you know why? DJ, the DJs were not headlining the way they are now. True. True. You, you would go to a party today because of the disc jockey. Right. But back yeah. then, it was the social clubs, the 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 the, the dance groups, the right. the venues. But but we used Kirk Townsend. Yes, we, that was our DJ right. uh, primarily. Well, excuse me. For our first yeah, party, Pitchell, in Pitchell, Pitchell. It was Wayne Williams. Believe it or not, yeah, Pitchell, Wayne Williams. and I went to grammar school together. He DJed our first party at Dave Harris' basement. We were raising money for St. Albie's. 
and, and he he DJed the party. Wayne always wanted to be a DJ. And and, and uh but then we went to Kirk Townsend because he has the sound reinforcement. He had some killer speech. Man, he would turn out. But <laughs> we, we stopped using uh Kirk because Kirk had Mendel locked down. And then we went to Wayne and because he started the chosen few. And, right. and he and, and guess what, you guys? Dr. Kylie was in the chosen few, man. <laughs> That dirty, yeah. low down, <laughs> but he got. It's the The whole concept behind it was, uh, yeah, like, uh, like Bob said, uh, Wayne was uh, Wayne became the primary DJ for the event. Now Wayne had had the had the germ of this idea in his head for for some time, but what the uh, what was different then, this is pre-DJ or pre-MC. You know, the DJ had not become an attraction unto themselves at this point. So it was still about the the uh, the groups, the host groups and the performance groups like ourselves. So we would, we'd have our event, we'd have it at a venue, charge admission. We could make uh, a modest amount, we could make a huge amount depending on the turnout. The DJ, who was an important factor in that, got paid a flat amount, a fixed amount. So it didn't matter whether we made 500 or 5,000 bucks, the DJ was only getting a couple of hundred bucks. Right, and right, we, that's we, true. When he saw this and he, he's thinking, well, I want some of that gate money. Why, why can't I have some of that gate money? So he took this germ of an idea that he had. And uh, yeah, like Bob said, he got, Got uh, we got together. He got together with me. He told me what is uh, what he had in mind. He had uh, Robert Ellis, uh, known Batman. everyone as Batman at, at the time. Robert was a, a good friend of ours as well. He was involved, and the uh, ironically enough, the DJ for the Chosen Few, the the other founding member, Ewart Abner, was dating Wayne's older sister at the time. So he was the actual DJ for the group. Wayne wasn't even the DJ for the group. He was. The, the founding member of, of the group. Wow. So we uh, had our first event for the chosen few uh, a year almost to the day after uh, after the doctors had come out. It was March 78 was the first chosen few event at I think St. Calabanus. So you know, it's, wow. We used a lot of school rectories. And so he was able to fulfill that envision that he had of, of getting the gate money. And so later, he had uh, he began to see that the DJ could be an actual attraction for the event. People could show they they would go to see a DJ that they liked. So what it uh, what was established, what was well known in nightclubs throughout the city, that people would go to the nightclub to hear a certain DJ. You know, Ron Hardy at the at the Den, and uh, I think Louis Vega or um, whoever at Faces. Those clubs promoted their, their DJs as an attraction. Wayne began mm -hmm. to see that it was possible to do this as, as a group renting out venues. So he tried to do the same thing. And that was really the birth of the chosen few as an entity. And so down, down the road, he decided he wanted to try to make it an actual group of DJs the way the doctors were a group of performers and dancers. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was, it was something that at the time was uh, was not appreciated by any of us for what it ultimately ended up being. It was right. actually it a big right. move. Right. And, and I didn't, you know, I had no intention of being the DJ. So at that point, I uh, I bowed out of the group. Uh, and at that point, I was kind of leaving the scene anyway. I didn't uh, I didn't see the scene going much further than it was at that point. This is around 1980, 81 or so. Uh, couldn't have been more wrong, obviously. <laughs> but, <laughs> the big DJs were like on the radio, uh, on yeah. the different radio stations. They were popular, but but um, on the circuit, there was a guy named Ernie Green. He kind of he DJ for an older crowd. He had a great reputation, but but um, basically, Kirk Townsend he had like um the the, the sound reinforcement, and I think he even had DJs that worked with him. You know that would do other jobs, but he couldn't be in two places at one time. You know, 
That, that is incredible. And, and that thread, that thin thread that ties everything together from you guys being doctors and coming in with the social clubs and the dancing and really creating that vibe that created the atmosphere for Mendel to become as popular as it became. Oh, man, the DJs used to come left and right to Mendel to, to help DJ. Um, the, the, they would give concerts, you know, uh, Steve Hurley, uh, uh, Frankie Knuckles. Everybody would come through, the, the Hot Mix Five. You know, uh, everybody would come through Mendel. And I think that's what, uh, I think Mendel, probably, man, like the school, they had a movie, Fame, where everybody would go there to yeah. dance. And I think <laughs> the guys would go into Mendel to be DJs. You know, like, <laughs> there's so many disc jockeys that, 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 that are associated with Mendel. You is it, and, and, and DJ Light, DJ Dewey, y'all are some mental monarchs yourselves, yeah. you know. So, so it, it's a wonderful. That was a great question. Um, well, I tell you what, this has been an amazing conversation. I think we're gonna have to have a part two and a part three. Uh, Tim <laughs> Cook, Cook, Blue Smoke, Blue Smoke, that's Blue it. Smoke, baby. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> hey, just this. this this next time we won't have so many technical difficulties, man. Uh, I, I tell you what, I tell you <laughs> what, the, the story cuts through because the, the amazing things that have happened just because you guys existed is All the right. importance of why you need your story needs to be told oh. and maintained for the for the history books. Because to your point, the answer is in the doctors. You guys created something that was fun that had competition but there was no violence there was no animosity everybody could get it was fun it, it was the same thing when we were in the in the 80s at our parties you knew if you created ruckus you were going to destroy this beautiful thing exactly, yeah. exactly. the spirit the spirit was what drove it you know if uh, exactly. anyone was going to cause problems at an event they were uh they were going against uh, frictioning against the spirit of the thing. And that that right. was what drove everyone. And when people saw that they could do, uh, they could actually uh, get into a business, get in, get into a line of work as a party promoter or or a DJ or a performer, then it uh, it took on a life of its own far beyond what we had uh, probably had thought to do. So there were a lot of people that were instrumental in the growth of later things that converged on that scene that we had uh, created. And then they went out into their own directions and did their own thing and took what they had observed and took that, uh, that spirit that they uh, were able to absorb and they applied it to what they were doing, you know, like you guys did and, and, uh, and, and Wayne and, and some of the people later. And there's, there's a few, um, a few binding uh, elements in that we could talk about that another time that have directly to do with, with the birth of house, but that was the core, of it. The, the spirit of that scene, the kind of uh, industry that could be born out of that scene and the individuals that were involved in it, that went out into the world and, and did stuff that they were inspired to do by being a part of the scene we created. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what. I, go ahead, Bob. That's how we got, that's how we met everybody. That's how we know everybody, man. Because we were promoters and, and, and DJs wanted to, 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 to DJ parties. So we would meet everyone. I, I, I mean, I go places, I know all the guys in, in, in um, the, 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 the places and things and uh, the, 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 the Chippies, the, 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 the Steve Hurley's, the Farley Keith's. I got to meet everybody. And they, they you know, we forget stuff, man. It, but it was just so much fun, the camaraderie, I, the camaraderie, you know? It, it's, it's just a, a beautiful thing, dude, DJ. It's deep, it's a beautiful thing, DJ. Hey, well, but I you know what? You I just want to say yeah. one thing. Not only were the, were the, uh, the kids was all excited, the parents, Ooh. I mean, they were, they, they were so yeah. hard and critique on us. I mean, because the needle was, that was one of our signatures. And one time Bob came, he called a meeting, he said, 
we got to take the needles off the plug. What are you talking about, man? That's our, that's our sixth record. Because they think we're drug dealers. What? Yeah, yeah, hey, that's true. Hey, so what? We took we took the needles off the pluggers, and the sky was the limit. But you know what? It was it was the pressure from the parents. You know what they were saying? We ain't gonna send our kids to the, the party, and they drug dealers. They keep these uh. And, and next thing you know, they were bringing their kids to. And it was a snowstorms, <laughs> man. It was like snow six feet deep, whatever. And they come to the parties, man. We yeah, it was man. a beautiful time, yep. you guys. It, it really was. And I tell you what, as as we close, you know, now I figured out what happened to me, DJ Dewey B. <laughs> I remember walking into that Mendel gym, and I never forget my feet got this feeling, and I okay. got on that dance floor. And I got me a circle going. That's and right, it was the spirit. It was the spirit right. that got me that it got a hold of me. Yes. That's right, DJ Lot. You're gonna be Dr. House, okay? <laughs> you're gonna be Dr. House, baby. All right. <laughs> Let's do hey, well, this. Man. Is, this has been great. And, uh, DJ we got DJ, you, man. Any parting thoughts for our brothers from Mendel? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gannon, Dr. Kylie. Thank you all for giving us this great thing that you gave us. And we, and it made made my life changed. And I'm glad you guys did what you did. Hey, thank you. for. Uh, I think, the, the, what's his name? Carrying the torch, DJ Lott. Carrying the torch. But he said that... Uh, <laughs> DJ Dude. What? Well, why don't nobody talk about the doctors? Oh, that was DJ Lot. Right. That was DJ Lot. Right, right, right. We're the missing piece of the puzzle, and you found out right now why. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. Okay. There you go, man. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Doctor House. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, this is uh, this is House Culture Conversations, and this has just been an amazing time together. Let's do it real soon, brothers in the spirit. Mendel Monarchs, dancing shoes, uh, DJs, whatever it is we got. We oh, love right. it. We love y'all. We can't wait to see y'all real soon and take care of yourselves being good health. And Dr. Kildare, hey, thank you for keep keeping us in your heart and telling us about your overcoming of your challenges because Absolutely. God is good. Absolutely. Okay. All the time. Thank we'll see y'all soon. Take hey, care. Right. Blue, 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 Blue Smoke. Take care. Blue Smoke. Blue smoke. <laughs> Later, fellas. Later.